The 23rd of August, 1989, two million people form one of the longest human chains ever, according to the World Guinness Book of Records. 600 kilometers long, millions of hands holding, linking three countries to reach one goal. What motivated such a deeply moving protest of people? On August 23, 1939, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and its secret protocols were signed. Two totalitarian regimes secretly divided Europe on a map. What sets the Nazi-Soviet Pact apart is the secret protocol, which essentially divided Central Europe into spheres of influence. The Nazi-Soviet Pact and its secret protocol was a treaty for war. It paved the way for the Second World War and its consequences, millions murdered, tortured, and exiled, occupied states and divided Europe, and many years of the Cold War tensions. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact shady deal meant occupation and annexation of the Baltic countries for a period of 50 long years. Such secret deals and divisions into spheres of influence went against the fundamentals of the international law. Soviet policy was not to deny the Nazi-Soviet Pact because that had been made public but particularly to deny the secret protocols. So they denied the existence of the secret protocols right up until 1989. The world commemorates the victims of Nazism and Stalinism on the Black Ribbon Day, August 23rd. The rally was one of 55 being held in cities around the world. On the same day, the Baltic states commemorate the Baltic Way of 1989, a campaign which made an impact to dismantlement of the Soviet Union. The Baltic Way was organized as a way of uh, effectively protesting against the annexation of Baltic states. Crucially, trying to bring the fate of the Baltic states, as they saw it, they had been forcibly annexed by the Soviet Union. It's trying to bring that story to the outside world. The narrative of World War II has been rather one-sided, particularly in the Western example. And I think it's important to remember that there were two totalitarian villains in World War II, uh, not one. Since the World War II, changes were made in an international architecture in hopes of discouraging war and encouraging peaceful coexistence among the world's countries. Today, sovereign equality territorial integrity, political independence of states are explicitly rooted into modern international organizations and arrangements. It deserves to be part of our, our collective narrative of World War II. It's a reminder of all of those, of the frailties really, of the world that we live in, uh, that it's, there's, there are still perils there uh, that need to be met and uh, uh, need to be guarded against.